So the last of the high leverage teaching practices, and I'm going to give us just a check on our time. We're going to try to spend uh, no more than about 10 minutes here total because we want to leave some time for questions. Um, is providing oral corrective feedback to improve learner performance. And in this case, what the authors are talking about is that corrective feedback when we choose to give it is purposeful on the part of the teacher and invites the learners to pay attention to the grammatical accuracy of the language that they produce. But the goal is never to ensure an error free performance. That's not the goal at all. Um, what learners do with that feedback that they receive is related to whether they notice the feedback as being corrective and that there are many strategies for giving learners feedback about how they use language in a given situation or context. And these strategies include explicit correction, um, a, a recast, which means that the student responds, uh, sorry, the teacher responds to the learner by rephrasing part of what the student said so that it is correct, but never actually says that the learner had made a mistake to begin with. They just kind of repeat what the learner intended to say and repeat it in a, in a grammatically correct way. Um, another strategy that might be used is clarification, where the teacher will actually ask a, a question or indicate that there's a problem with either the comprehensibility of what the learner said or the accuracy of it or both um, by saying something like, excuse me, or what did you mean by, um, did you mean this or that, um, in order to try to help um, clarify it, potentially a misunderstanding that might have occurred because of the, the language that is being used. And then there's also another strategy where the teacher indicates that there's an error um, by asking questions about what the students said or providing grammatical, what is called like meta language, like kind of overtly talking about the structure that points out the nature to the error, such as, are you, for, are you referring to the present or the past, which is a very, now we're definitely talking about grammar. So this is just one of the strategies that the authors say happens um, and can be used. Um, or there's another one that I think a lot of us as language teachers do where you elicit the correct response by repeating what the student said, but stopping right before the error that the student made and then kind of waiting and hoping that the student's going to realize, uh, oh, the teacher stopped. Let me think about what I said. Oh, that must be what I was supposed to say. And then the student fills in the rest of the sentence um, in that point. Or the teacher could ask questions again, kind of like earlier to elicit the form, like being specific. Well, how do you say her in French? Um, and sometimes there's another type of repetition where you don't correct the error, um, you don't ask a question, you just repeat what the student said, but you repeat it so it sounds like a question because you're questioning whether the student really meant to say that. So these are all some strategies um, that range from being very direct and making sure the student is aware that there is an error and or that the teacher would like it corrected to being very much something that just we got the gist and the teacher is going to rephrase or recast that just in a correct way and which way we choose to go is something that we as teachers make a strategic choice about depending on our goals for the learners at that time and what they really need to be attending to versus what's not very important at this particular point in time as well as other factors like social emotional um, factors and so on so as we look at that um, I'm going to ask Laura to start with just a couple of ways that she provides oral corrective feedback that will guide and support the work of her students. Um, you know, Laura, as your students build the language and culture and content skills that they'll need, do you have some favorite strategies for when they do need feedback? What is What are some of the ways you like to do that? Okay, I want to start off by saying I'm in a really conflicted place about giving oral feedback um, or corrective <laughs> feedback. Uh, I recently attended a workshop with Annabelle Allen and by her, her stance, I mean, it made a lot of sense to me was that either they're not ready for, if they're making an error orally, either they're not going to hear your correction or they're going to hear it and that's all they're going to hear and they're going to engage the judgmental little editor in their head and that's going to impede the communication. And it makes me think about like all the things, the times, like, are they, do I really not understand them and how precise do they need to be? And so like, the most oral correction that I, I've been trying to do since that workshop, which was relatively recently, um, 
then my students will, we, they have to tell me how they're doing. They come in the door and say, but it's tardes, como estas? And they'll be like, they'll just say, como estas? And instead of, you know, me saying, no, no, no. Like I'll say, yo estoy bien, y tú, como estas? Like I just, I turn it around and then like someone would, in a conversation, if you were misheard, because we mishear each other all the time, expecting to hear one thing in, in our own first language even, and not another. So it's not exactly correction. I do it, I try to do it more in a natural conversational kind of way, like you would if there was a slight misunderstanding. Um, like, and I will still kind of do the tu or yo, like if j just in that brief little exchange, but overall I try and, I try and understand them. So as for, for feedback, I I usually reserve, I try, my goal is to reserve it for the presentational mode going forward because you don't want them to feel embarrassed going up there with their public products. So um, when, Google Docs, Google is my favorite thing. Like I, I will, I like how now when they turn things in on Google Classroom, it automatically goes into the suggestion mode and they can accept it or not accept it. A lot of times I'll also, if, if I want them to change something, I will add a comment to what they have scripted for what they're gonna to say to the sharks or in their commercial or in their visitor video or whatever project we're working on their speech for saving the animals. Um, so I, or on their worksheets or handouts, they're gonna hand out their flyers to save the animals. But um, so I'll give them feedback on that and I'll do it as a suggestion or I'll even highlight it and add a comment so they have to actually write it out themselves in writing. So I'll do that for the presentational mode. As far as presentational speaking, when they're doing their videos, I like Seesaw a lot, uh, web.seesaw.me, um, because they can like put their own lines in on an index card looking thing and then they can record themselves saying it. And I can record comments back, so, like words that I want them to work on or something before you know the big presentation and before they upload to YouTube or whatever, or on unlisted of course. Um, so as far as the oral feedback, I'm trying to restrict myself overall on that, especially in the interpersonal mode, but in the presentational mode, I, I like to do it more with technology so it's less confrontational, I guess. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. And actually, one of, the, one of the strategies that we talked about just before starting this was that sense of kind of doing it in a conversational way to where it's like you just, you only ask a question or maybe like you said, you, you, you say it back in a way that kind of gives them the correct answer for the, how are you? And like, hi, I'm doing great, how are you? So that they hear what they need and can be very successful turning it around. Um, but I liked how you also highlighted the way we can use technology, particularly in the presentational mode, which should be edited, it should be refined, it should be rehearsed, and they should have had opportunities to get feedback. And that feedback can occur in a very kind of private space, and it's very targeted to exactly what each learner needs based on what, you're show what they're showing in the draft, whether it's the speaking portion that they're, they're sending you via Seesaw, or a, a presentational writing that they're sending you through Google Slides, um, they get exactly what they need and they get a chance to revise, refine, edit, correct, and so on, so that their ultimate product is going to really highlight what it is they mean to communicate and want to say. Um, very quickly, actually, um, due to time, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next question. And I think what we're probably going to need to do is actually make this our last question so that we have time for some questions. Um, Megan, I'm going to start with you. As students prepare for their culminating event in high quality project based language learning, which will be that public product, um, they might worry about making mistakes in the target language. So um, how do you communicate to students the, the normal role that errors play in language acquisition, or how do you support them to feel okay with the fact that even if they prepared, they might say something they didn't intend to say or, or write something they didn't intend to write, and it's still going to be okay. Um, how do you get them ready for that? Um, good question. That's something that they're prepared with from day one with us in, in our program. Um, and and I, so the self-correction is something that we will often do. I don't necessarily do the explicit. Uh, uh, I also do it sort of quietly in the assessments. But the students learn in the sort of the individual assessments that are feedback that I give to them. They also begin to learn to be able to self-assess of where they, where they are. So most of the students are aware throughout the whole process 
uh, where the strengths and weaknesses are, where they can do better. Um, uh, we also do a lot of sort of peer, uh, peer evaluation or peer feedback. So we also learn how to give constructive feedback. So that's something else that students learn also how to be able to learn how to take constructive feedback. But I monitor that a little bit so that it's not so, so direct. Um, but so by the time they were going to get to their project, it also if they have difficulty saying something, um, then what we do is we ha I have everyone elicit from the community. Um, I'll say everybody, you know, let's help out. Bam, bam, bam. How do we say this? Um, and so we get everyone else to sort of collect a vote. Yeah, and that's not the only way to say it. Just like in English, there's multiple ways of saying it. So that they begin to get used to the fact that they can hear different sort of possibilities and input from their peers. Um, and that it's not really called out as an error. It's just called out as like, hmm, I don't yet know how to phrase this. Um, and so that helps prepare them that they're okay with making those errors and they're just really more excited and focused on the communication. I like how you framed that, how, it, and I think, um, I, I'm, I think Laura would probably would say the same thing as far as it's not not calling things out as an error, but just as a, I don't know how to say this yet. and you know, we might use our learning community to help generate some ideas for how that can be done if it is something that we as a community have kind of had a little bit of experience with, or we'll provide other strategies to support our learners. Really quickly, um, Laura, was there a particular strategy that you use with your learners to, especially since yours are younger and novice, um, to help them be less nervous about an error that might occur? The most effective thing I've found is having a pre-presentation where they pre where one group presents to another and they get feedback and mostly that cuts down on the nervousness because they know where the holes are and they have a chance to fill them in. So like if we could do that two classes before the big day, then they, the next day can be revision and, and usually something else besides just the revision because otherwise they won't have enough to do. But like <laughs> If they have every, if they, I just send them off into like the hall, and I'll like find an empty classroom or something if I can, and have a couple of groups in each one, and they'll just present from their laptop what it is they're going to do, and they don't necessarily get the feedback face to face, but like they hear the questions, and mostly they hear themselves, like what it is they're not able to spit out, or what what they can anticipate is going to trip them up, so that they can go over and over it if they're that kind of presenter, or they can just be ready to laugh it off if they are a little bit more freewheeling. So um, the, the pre-presentation is the best strategy I've done. Absolutely, and I think um, what you were saying about, yes, there's, there's the potential for pure feedback and that being really purposeful about scheduling that kind of thing so that there's time, if they do get pure feedback, there's time for them to act on it. Um, alongside other things, but I think you also hit on that other important point of it might not be that they have any errors that need correcting. They really just need opportunities to run through things with someone else listening to them. And sometimes our learners don't realize the the importance of how different it's going to feel. Um, they run through it in their head. They run through it in their room. They run through it, you know, on on their own. And it suddenly does feel different when people are looking at you, especially. Um, if you're not someone who, you know, like most of our learners are not yet in a position where they're speaking even directly to a couple of people in a presentational way um, on a normal, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So I think that's a really thoughtful, a thoughtful approach and thing to do.